and welcome back to Incredible Inverts and Other Animals with me, Bill. Now, if you're first time joining me, please do go ahead and check out my other videos. Please do again, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications. Now today we're going to have a look at another amazing species of invertebrate. But we're going to be looking at a dairy cow. What's a dairy cow when it's an invertebrate? It's an isopod. So we're going to be having a look at the dairy cow isopods. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we have the dairy cow isopod, or Borcelio lavis dairy cow. A reason for the uh, little bit of dairy cow at the end of the scientific name is because this is a genetic morph, meaning that this coloration is purely captive bred. You will not see this coloration out in the wild. They would not survive out in the wild in this coloration. They stick out like a sore thumb and would be picked up by predators. The natural color for this species is kind of a uniform grey kind of all over. Now, now these are sometimes referred to as the smooth woodlouse as well or the swift woodlouse as they are fairly quick. Um, hopefully you can see that here they can uh, certainly shift around when they want to. Now, as I said this is uh, the dairy cow form, the captive bred morph but this is probably one of the most popular isopods currently in captivity. Now, one for their, their coloration they get a nice decent size, they're active, and also they breed like the clappers. So these really don't take long before you get an explosion in numbers with these guys and can fill up all your tanks with them. So this is my main colony uh, for this species. I've now do some of these off uh, every now and then, so I actually recently gave a few to a friend of mine. And then I do sometimes put these in other tanks as well that I perhaps don't have any isopods in as these guys are probably the fastest breeder that I have and here hopefully you can see when the camera focuses in again I uh, have a good mix of adults and juveniles, there's even small babies in there as well I do keep springtails in with these guys as well just to help keep things nice and clean and diet for these guys, much like other isopods, is predominantly rotten wood rotten leaf litter and they fleared all their leaves from the other day and then I do supplement their feed with uh, supplementary vegetables, so they've got some carrot and some sweet potato, which really doesn't last very long in here. Now the species Porcelio lavis is a very widespread species, so it's what's known as a cosmopolitan species, meaning that it kind of inhabits a wide range, kind of most of the world you will find this guy. You can even find the wild type of these in here in the UK, but very rarely have they actually been recorded. So that's why it's actually quite important actually, if you do find things in the gardens that we do actually record those uh, using things like I record and stuff so that we know what's actually living here and they've also been introduced into various areas like Lord Howe Island near Australia. As I said these are one of the most popular kept isopods currently in captivity at least here in the UK and this colour form is certainly up there as probably the most popular and certainly one of the easiest to get hold of and one of the cheapest to get hold of and that's because of their breeding, they breed really really quickly and you soon get high numbers of them so you don't need to start off with uh, very many actually, I think I started off with 10 and in the space of a month or two I had well over 200 uh, in my tub and keeping them is very very simple you just need a tub that you can give them enough dirt to bury in and you can use things like organic compost um, topsoil, mix in perhaps a bit of sand sometimes as well Make sure you get some nice white rotten wood, some dead leaves in there for them as well. Make sure those leaves are deciduous for them uh, and slightly rotten. Give them something to climb on, like a nice piece of bark and something they'll climb under that. So, and then you just want to spray one end of the tub so they've got some moisture. Without that they can't breathe. They are crustaceans, they basically have gills so they need the moisture in the air to actually be able to breathe. As long as you do things like that, you'll have loads in no time. And then you can start introducing those into various other tanks. But if you keep reptiles, amphibians, other invertebrates, you can use these as custodians for a bioactive setup. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the dairy cow isopods. Hopefully, you agree with me. Fantastic species, absolutely beautiful. And if you're thinking of getting into isopods, these are definitely a species or a morph of a species that I highly recommend. They're super easy to keep, they breed like nobody's business. So, and you'll end up with hundreds straight away. I've already given some away to people just because I get too many. But they're great by themselves. 
or in bioactive enclosures so whichever you choose I tend to keep mine by themselves I enjoy them just as pets as anything else but I do use them occasionally in a few enclosures as well as a uh, clean up crew and stuff so you can do that with these guys as well so yeah if you're interested in isopods and want to get isopods I highly recommend the dairy cows now, if you did enjoy this video please do give it a thumbs up again if you haven't yet please do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications and please leave me some comments down below do you keep isopods if you do which species of isopod do you keep so are you looking into getting isopods which ones would you like hopefully these are on your list so other than that until next sunday when i'll see you again goodbye